So what's going on guys, my name is Mr. Dalek JD, and today we have more steps towards the main easter egg quest within Dirt Ice and Drac. I uploaded a video previously showing you how to start the main easter egg and these are the next few steps onwards from that point. But I will have a full guide to this from start to finish up on my channel. If you find this useful definitely drop a like rating on the video, let me know your thoughts on this crazy easter egg quest that we're on right now and let's get straight into the next steps. So, from the previous step, once you've teleported back once, all you need to do is just teleport once. You do not need to pick up the plunger, it appears to be some sort of silly melee weapon which isn't actually needed and you lose it pretty quickly anyway. If you die, I'm pretty sure you lose it and if you go down there is a chance that you lose it as well. But you just need to go back in time once, that is literally it. Now you want to put your upgraded bows back in the middle if you've got them and you need to get yourself a normal Wrath of the Ancients bow. Just pick one up as normal and then go down to the teleporter room and there'll be these small circular pods above the teleporter pad itself. You need to shoot each of these with a normal bow and these will cause the pods to start glowing orange. They need to all be glowing orange and straight after that you will hear a very strange noise which is an energy that electrifies random objects around the map. Now there's going to be four objects in total which will be electrified in the sequence and they randomize every time you do this. The objects electrify one at a time and you have a certain amount of time in order to find them and shoot them with a bow. Now these locations that I've found so far can be in the church, there'll be a clock on the wall or a radio on one of the shelves that will be electrified. By double tap there is a car tire which can be electrified. In Samantha's bedroom there's a globe that can be electrified. In the spawn room there can be a telephone hanging on the wall which can be electrified. In the power room there is a phone which can be electrified. There is a clock in the upper halls next to the bell tower which can be electrified. And there could be more locations but that. But make sure to check around the map everywhere. The best way to do this is with all four players be surrounded in all sorts of different locations just checking every single piece of scenery make sure to check the walls and the ceilings to look for this electrified object it can literally be any weird random object now if you don't manage to find and shoot four electrified objects within the time frame around the map you'll hear this really nasty noise which indicates that you failed now you'll need to wait until the next round in order to retry this and at the start of the next round you will hear the noise again and that's when one of the objects around the map will become electrified. Now if you've shot all four of these correctly and you've not missed any and you've done it within the time then you'll hear a noise and the teleporter in the lab area will now have a purple glow to it. Now the next step is all players in the game need to stand on this teleporter and they'll be teleported back in time where there'll be a cutscene with Dr. Groff. The main focus at this point is to memorise the code Groff puts on the safe as well as pick up a huge blue fuse in the room. Now in the safe there'll be a sequence of three random symbols besides the safe when Dr. Groff closes it. Memorise these symbols as you will need them very soon. Now when you've teleported back you'll be at the rocket pad and there'll be a panzer soldat spawning down as well as a huge swarm of zombies. Now make sure that you've got yourself sorted and when you've got near to the end of that round go to the death ray and on one of the sides it will actually allow you to place the fuse we picked up from Dr. Groff's room in this machine. Now it could be specific to a certain character being able to place the fuse in so keep trying if you picked it up and it doesn't necessarily work as it will work for one of the players in your game. Once the fuse has been placed down in the death ray it will now allow you to switch a sign on the death ray from destroy to protect. There'll be a small little lever next to it if you hold square this should now switch to protect. Now make your way to the Wonderfizz machine by the bell tower and the computer next to it should now be active. Now each screen will have a symbol on it relating to the symbols from Groff safe. You need to input the code by interacting with the screen that shows each symbol that links to Dr. Groff safe in order from top to bottom. If you've inputted this code in the wrong order or wrong symbols altogether, you'll have to start another round and restart the process of finding the four sparking objects, then going back in time and looking at the code that Dr. Groff puts in and it will actually be a different code and then you'll simply have to change the death rate to protect and then go over to the computer and input the correct sequence. If you've inputted the code correctly, this will now open the safe in the teleporter room in our current time 
where one player will pick up two cylinder objects and a group 935 card by going up to the safe and holding square. You will now hear character quotes saying that we need to bring the rocket back down to the earth and Dr. Gruff will speak over the tannoy talking about Rick Toffin. Time to bring him back down to earth. First we bring Dempsey home. Then we will do one I know you can hear me, Rick Toffin. Even if you choose not to respond. Though I do not understand how or why. I believe you are in fact an enemy spy. More than that, you may, in fact, be an imposter. I strongly suggest you stop pursuing this foolish and dangerous endeavor. After the sequence is finished and Dr. Groff has stopped talking, you want to make your way over to the death ray trap and at the back of each pillar, you'll find an empty slot between two pillars with lightning surging through. Now, whoever picked up the objects from the safe need to place the cylinders on each pillar either side of the death ray. Once this is done, you now need to face the side of the death ray saying destroy or protect and using the lever, change it to destroy. This will now activate the two computer pads around the map, one next to the bell tower and one in the rocket launch pad. Now in our game only Dempsey could activate the computers but I'm certain this works with everyone but if it doesn't then it is only with Dempsey. The holding square on the computer will cause a different symbol to appear on each screen for a few seconds. You need to memorize these because a few seconds later all the symbols will disappear. Now the main huge monitor will now show a symbol which you need to match with the same symbol on one of the four screens. This is a classic game of Simon Says. Now whilst this is happening, an infinite spawn of dogs will happen so someone needs to protect the player playing Simon Says. So the big monitor will show a symbol and then memorizing where the symbols were on the four smaller screens you need to interact with the screen which matches that symbol. When you've completed this, one of the metal balls floating above the death ray will now be glowing. You now need to go to the other computer and repeat the same Simon Says game and once you've done this both metal balls will now be glowing. You now need to go back to the back of the death ray and hold square on the green button. A rocket will now be falling towards the earth flying directly into the bell tower destroying the roof and crashing down in the courtyard. test chamber containing Dempsey in the courtyard along with this crashed rocket and next to the rocket there will be a golden rod on the floor which you can now pick up. Take the golden rod down to the wrath of the ancients room and place it in the slab to spawn a ghostly gatekeeper. Follow this keeper as it will lead you to a symbol on a wall. This will cause a white ring to spawn and the more players stood in this ring the bigger the ring will be. Now zombies need to be killed within this ring in order to collect souls for the gatekeeper. Once you have enough of these souls the gatekeeper will suck up these souls and then move to a different direction and this step will be repeated two more times in two other areas before the gatekeeper leads you down to the undercroft. Now the next steps of this easter egg are really cool as the gatekeeper will lead you down to this triangle in the undercroft section and the triangle will actually open so similar to the MPD from Moon, which originally revealed Samantha but this time it will be revealing a gatekeeper. Now I don't have this actually done in this gameplay but there will be a link in the description to the next easter egg steps where we will show that as well as finish the easter egg so be sure to look out for that it may already be there but I have a full complete guide on how to do this easter egg from start to finish on my channel very very soon and it will also be linked down below in the description and annotated on screen. If you guys enjoyed this and found this useful make sure to smash 
smash that like button, subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll catch you on another one soon.